Re-Legend is an early access game, therefore the contents of this video are subject to change at any time. I'll try to keep any minor updates in a pinned comment. For those not in the know, Re-Legend is a farming sim in the same vein as titles such as Stardew Valley, Harvest Moon, and My Time at Portia, with the exception that Re-Legend leans more into monster hunting and taming. I also want to say this quickly before I get started. I'm going to skip over the cutscenes and other story elements during this video because I want to cover the core mechanics of the game and hit a couple of key points that people just starting off in this game might miss. To start off with, the game dumps a load of weapons and a set of armor on you and tells you to save an NPC. Double click the armor pieces and the bow to quickly equip them. Then head on out to the combat zone where you're confronted by two Magnus. Middle click the mouse to toggle target locking and scroll to pick your target. Left click to attack with your weapon. The Magnus will telegraph their attacks with red shapes on the ground. Hold a direction and hit space to roll dodge. Avoid their attacks and hit them with your weapon until both are dead. After the next cutscene, you're forced to sleep in a bed until the next morning. Save the game and head outside where the mayor is waiting to give you a tour of the farm. Once he's done expositing, open your inventory and take off your weapon and armor pieces, run to the bin, and throw everything but your new tools in. All of this beginner gear is easy to recraft and you need the money more. This is the only bit that is time sensitive. You have a short window of time before Gunther arrives to take the contents of the bin. If you get the items in quick enough, you'll receive your 900 gold on this day. Now go up to the hot springs and free the waters. It takes 35 hits with the pickaxe and it will restore any stamina used in this process. This is important because you will use up all of your stamina crafting the items you just sold. Go down to your farm and collect six each of the logs, ferns, and stones. You can completely clear this area if you like, but six is the bare minimum. Go on up to the crafting station and select the armor and confirm to start the crafting minigame. This is a simple minigame. You just need to click the left mouse button when the arrows are on the colored rectangles. If you miss three times, you fail to craft the item. Which is fine, you preserve the materials and only lose out on the stamina. Since you've already broken open the hot springs, you can restore any lost stamina and try as many times as you need. With the items crafted, head to the south, past your farm plot to the lake, and keep swimming south and east until you get to a small alcove with a weird round thing, which is actually a box that drops a rune of haste, which consumes a bit of stamina for an 8 second speed buff. Now you want to head over to Amelia's shop. Once there, she gives you five seeds for free. However, what you're not told is there's a festival on the 10th of spring where you need to present a Kyroot for a cash prize. Buy a few of those seeds. If you grab the extra quest from Amelia, I'd suggest to wait to buy the seeds for it. They're expensive, and the reward for the quest is only relationship points with Amelia. Also, since I mentioned the festival, you can see when most events are by opening the calendar with the C key. Anyways, back at the farm, clear out a small section, if you haven't already, and select your hoe to, and start tilling with the left mouse button. Drop your seeds on your hotbar, select them, then drop them on the tilled earth with the left mouse button. Select your watering can and start watering with the left mouse button. Then stop watering by pressing the left mouse button. Using the F key on the well with your watering can out refills it. Also, as a side note, if you want to plant underwater crops, use the spade to till the ground. The only difference here is that you need to scare little fish away from the crops daily instead of watering the plants. Once you've got all that done, you're free to explore town and talk to the NPCs. Here are a few of note. In the combat zone, visit the hammer icon. Inside is Hugo. Hugo upgrades your armor and weapons. While the services aren't useful now, it won't be for a while, it's still an easy thing to miss.
You should also be familiar with the hospital. It's where you wake up if you're knocked unconscious by drain health or staying up too late. Edna will also heal you during the day. So there's that. In the industrial zone, you'll find the mineral shop run by Lloyd. He sells ores and coal. There's also the wood shop run by Lynn. He sells wood. Back across the kiosk zone, you'll find a tavern restaurant thing run by Mori, and she sells food. Amelia's shop is also here. She sells farming equipment and seeds. Finally, head south to the angler area. There are a couple of fishing spots here, and it's a great way to spend the rest of the day since you can't leave town today. Approach the water near where you can see a fish in the water, and you'll get a fishy thought bubble over your head. Equip your fishing rod and cast it with a left click. On the third nibble, click the left mouse button to start reeling in the fish. The fishing minigame isn't complex, but takes some time getting used to. Hold the left click to reel in. As you do, the fishing rod starts to fill up, and the fish gauge starts to deplete. If the fishing rod fills completely up, the rod will snap and you'll lose the fish. Just let up off the mouse button and the rod will start to turn back to normal. When you're reeling in, the fish might start to struggle. It will thrash and an arrow will pop up on the screen. You just need to hold that direction key and be patient. If you try to reel in, the broad will break. Once the arrow, or series of arrows, has disappeared, you can continue reeling in with the left mouse button. Ideally, you'd want to catch five to six co-stars before the end of the day to be used tomorrow. As a side note, you'll want to have one inventory space free. If you need to, just toss a fish in the bin before you sleep. When you leave the house on day three, you'll be interrupted by noises coming from a nearby cave. Ignore them for a bit while you water your crops, refill your watering can, and now we can go to the cave. Open your inventory and right click the tasty meat and click hold, or move the tasty meat to your hotbar. Select the meat to hold it, then point your character in the direction of the Draco Newt and throw the meat using right click. There will be a spiral of heart bubbles coming out of the Magnus, letting you know it's ready to be tamed. Approach it and use the F key to jump on its back. You'll notice some new minigame has approached. This one has concentric circles, and the goal is to keep the moving reticle as close to the center as possible by tapping the movement keys opposite the way it's moving. You'll see some guide arrows on the side letting you know which way the reticle is furthest from the center and which directional keys you'll need to press. You'll also see a gauge around the outside that is filling up with green. As long as you're not in the outermost circle, it will keep filling. If you stay in the outermost circle for too long, you'll fail the tame. If it does fill, however, you'll have tamed a Magnus. Now that you have it, let's see what you can do with it. You can use the F key to get on its back. The left mouse button is its primary attack, and the right mouse button is its secondary attack, which costs stamina points. Certain Magnus have a tool function on their secondary attack. Take the Draco Newt, for example. It functions as a watering can. G lets you get off the Magnus' back. While not writing, you can hold F to interact with the Magnus and build your bond with it. You can also feed it by throwing food at it. Visit the mayor's house to finally get permission to leave town. The first place you want to visit is as far left as you can go, Pruny Cave. Once inside, look for a seahorse creature. Throw your co-star fish at it until you get the heart bubble spiral. This can take between two and five fish. This is why I said to get so many. Once you tame it, you now have two Magnus following you around, and this one has a ranged magic attack. At this point, feel free to test drive them, but you'll eventually level them up. In fact, you probably already have a level yourself and haven't noticed it yet. 
In your inventory, select the second tab on the right hand side of the screen. Here are your stats, starting from the top and moving clockwise. Strength increases your attack, health, and crit chance. Endurance increases your defense and health. Luck increases your crit chance and drop rate. Wisdom increases magical defense and magical attack. Intelligence increases magical attack and critical damage. Focus increases attack and critical damage. If you're using a melee weapon or bow, the stats important to you are strength, endurance, luck, and focus. If you're using a staff, the stats important to you are intelligence, wisdom, luck, and endurance. On each level up, you get two points to distribute where you want. Out of four points, one should go towards your damage stat, one should increase your defense, one should increase your health, and one should increase your luck. So for melee or bow, this could look like two strength, one endurance, one luck. For staves, this could look like one intelligence, one wisdom, one luck, and one endurance. There are probably better builds to be conceived, but these builds should be able to get the job done. The Magnus stats are found on the third tab. Magnus get five points to distribute per level. One point should go towards luck, two towards the damage stat, and either two points towards the evolution stat, or one point towards the evolution stat, and one towards endurance. I personally like for physical attackers, one luck, two endurance, two strength, and for magical attackers, one luck, two intelligence, one wisdom, one endurance. If the Magnus needs focus for evolution, I cap it to whatever value it needs. Speaking of evolution, each Magnus evolves at level 15 and again at level 45. Each evolution requires a certain stat to be above a specific value. The bond with the Magnus needs to be at 5 hearts, and you need to feed it a specific item. Also, certain Magnus have multiple evolution paths. Take for example, the Draco Newt. At level 15, if you have Endurance at 15 or higher, your bond maxed out, and you feed it an Iron Ore, it changes into a Dracogre, which is a tank with limited melee damage. On the other hand, if at level 15 you have focus at 15 or higher, your bond maxed out, and feed it a Kyroot, it changes into a Draco Claw, a close range melee fighter. However, if at level 15 you have intelligence at 15 or higher, your bond maxed out, and feed it a Rainbow Fish, it changes into a Draco Fiend, which is a healer and ranged magic user. I'd recommend to check out the Re-Legend Gamepedia wiki for evolution requirements. Since this game is early access, the requirements may change over time, and new Magnus are expected to be added as new chapters of the game's story are released. Currently, there's also a sticky post on the Steam forums that has a link to the evolution requirements of all Magnus currently in the game. I want to take a bit more time to talk about the inventory UI. I've already talked about the first three tabs, so let's start on the fourth tab. Here you'll find your progression with different skills in the game. As you gain levels, you're given rewards. For the most part, this is just a stamina increase. The fifth tab is the book of NPCs. It tells you their profession, their birthday, their likes, their dislikes, and what your relationship with them is like. You give gifts to NPCs by holding an item and using the F key. The sixth tab is the Book of Magnus, Fish, and Crops. It tells you what each Magnus likes and what loot they drop, what the season of each crop is, where it's planted and what the typical valuation of the crop is, and where to find each fish you have caught, what their size is, and what their typical value is. The next to last tab is your quest log. This is where you can view the full list of quests and is also where key items and rewards hide. The last tab is where the settings are at. You can also view and change keybinds here as well as revisit tutorials. That's all I've got for this video. If this video was helpful, make sure you like and share it. Your support really helps out the channel. Thank you guys so very much for watching and have yourselves a wonderful day.